to the Phone Tap Podcast. we got the burnouts. Yes. Thank you. Frank is back. introduction today because Frank's got some information to drop on yes. all of us about some marijuana we thought yes. was important. We were, uh, we were just talking about addiction, dependencies, dependencies and other drugs, dependencies. mental dependencies, physical dependencies. I was just telling Unc about certain things that you can't get physical dependencies of, and he tried to say that marijuana's like that, and I said... No, 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 I didn't say that. That no, was he, me. Oh, yeah. My bad. Whatever. <clears throat> well, anyway. I Blame know it's the not. right person. I know okay. it's not, and I have experience from the last couple so, days. So, marijuana dependency is real, okay? Um, marijuana addiction is psychological. Marijuana dependency and addiction are two different things, okay? When you have a dependency in your body, it's not that you're addicted to something. It's like uh, somebody who takes melatonin to go to sleep. Kind of like the same equivalent of smoking cigarettes where you're not really addicted to the cigarette so much as the hand-to-mouth fixation? No, because uh, you actually are addicted to the nicotine. Yeah, but even after the fact, you can break the nicotine addiction. It's the hand-to-mouth thing that... No, 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 because that is a psychological addiction, and that's what I was talking about with the other stuff that we were talking about. The whole hand-to-mouth thing, that's psychological. That's you moving something to your mouth. You've been uh, doing it for so it's, long. It's different for different it's people because my uh, my yeah. mother's a heavy smoker, yeah. and she's tried to quit millions of times. And her biggest thing was is that she... It was the 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 hand to mouth thing, I guess. Yeah. That's what, you're, what you're talking about. So she got the um, the Nicorette version. I guess they have like a. It's actually shaped like a cigarette. Yes. And, and she tried it, and it didn't work for her. It it, it, it still gave her, her the, the same this amount is, of nicotine. This is going to sound just... odd, and I don't mean it as a cliche because I know she's older than all of us. But maybe get into knitting or crocheting. <laughs> Because if it's really the hand-to-mouth thing, maybe if she had something to physically keep her hands busy, right. it could but break the cycle. She's also in a wheelchair, so I I, I want to say there's... Um, Arthritis. There might be something, yeah. Okay. yeah. So, so, but again, those are all psychological things. You can break that in your mind. It's all something to do with a psychological thing. Weed actually does give you physical dependency and you become dependent on it for certain things much like your body becomes dependent on melatonin say you can't sleep and you eat a melatonin gummy every night for you know six fucking months and then you decide to stop taking them guess what the same thing if you were on sleep medication well that just means that your body isn't creating the melatonin because you're putting it into your body exactly why why it's more medicinal than some of the more hardcore drugs because it's a little less aggressive and actually more beneficial no it's your body it's the way that your body works yes let me kind explain. Of does that yeah, because for... didn't you okay. say that we're all born with um yes. was it natural CBD receptors? No. Yes, oh, yes, and no. THC. We are born <laughs> with cannabinoid That's what receptors, not CBD receptors. That was the first. We are born with mind. cannabinoid receptors, which means we are born with receptors to absorb all cannabinoids. So, so in all reality, a better painkiller would be something based off. Marijuana versus what we actually use, no. opiates. No. No? Marijuana only works for mild to moderate pain because it works by oscillating your immune system. Your immune system helps with inflammation. Your immune system helps with pain, right? Now, the way it works is by affecting your endocannabinoid system. Now, the reason you can build a physical dependency on marijuana is because it introduces phytocannabinoids into your body, which are cannabinoids that come from plants, which are cannabinoids that come from the external environment. When this happens, just like somebody who takes melatonin gummies, your body starts to produce less and less of its own cannabinoids because it knows you're going to introduce cannabinoids, so it does not need to produce them, so it saves its energy to do something else. I can honestly say that what he's saying is true. Yep. Um, because uh, uh, I think we talked about this on another no. episode about uh, going 
a month without smoking yep. and then smoking again. Well, the longest I've ever went um, in my adult life uh, was when I was incarcerated for two and a half weeks, and that's the oh, longest yeah, we I did ever talk went. About this before. Yeah. Um, but other than that, uh, the other day I was uh, I was pretty sick, and um, it was weird to me because. I went 36 hours without <coughs> smoking a, anything or being around anybody that was smoke sweat. And you started to get headaches and irritable. Am I right? I didn't just because you got to remember I'm, I'm on a lot of medications. Oh, that, yeah, like, okay. Um, so it kind of counterbalanced it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mitigated. Um, but work. that next day when I smoked for the first time and it was a dab and and i did a dab that was uh half the size of what i would normally do because i didn't for one want to waste it and for two i didn't want to gag after i was just sick Um, and dude i was high for i felt like half the day just from that one dab so you know a day a day and a half so what um, what happened is you're a very, 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 very heavy smoker. I'm not though. You know, I've actually just, if you look at how much do I really smoke? Like unk, the blunts unk, that I, unk, unk, every dab that you take, especially the size that you take, cause I've seen you take dabs. Don't lie to me. Is the equivalent of an entire blunt to the face. Okay, I'll accept that. But I, <laughs> I, I only do like three to four dabs a day. That's a heavy smoker. Do On you realize a regular meat. smoker smokes one blunt throughout the entire day? And then I probably really? smoke one to two blunts a day. Yes. So that even means I'm a heavy smoker. Yes. And That's I don't what I try to like tell people. Guys. If you smoke more than... A half a gram a day, you are classified as a heavy smoker. No shit. Because a half a gram a day for a regular person is actually enough to get you high. You oh, pack a bowl, a, a regular person, you pack a bowl, you hit that thing twice, you're good. Shit, you wait a good person, like half I, hour, 45 minutes. I don't really minutes, smoke you hit bowls, but if I sit and, and pack a bowl, like I like, I like to smoke. Too. I'm a smoking the whole thing. I like to smoke. If I have to smoke a bowl, I like to smoke the. Um, the uh, Sherlock recreational oh, yeah. looking ones, oh, so I can hold it between my one. fingers. Recreational like users yeah. like Derek us, we are heavy smokers. Up at um, Smoking Joe's for like five bucks, I want to get one. Really? So, yeah. Meerschaum looking ones. I almost yeah. want to go get a, an old school corn cob pipe. You guys, too. that would be. He's got one. You guys gotta. You guys gotta remember. Most smokers used to be like Rob. Smoke a couple of joints a day, blunt a day. That used to be most smokers, right? Then we had the introduction of the legal market. Well, now you've got the weekend warrior. Now you've got the once a day I need a cookie at the end of the day. You know what I'm saying? You've got this entire people, market the, the, where it's like. The old alcohol <laughs> crowd, essentially. You know, the ones be like, oh, let's get together. One, like I saw an ad for, um, what is it, Mood? The gummies that should <laughs> yeah. be selling Oh, online. yeah, yeah, yeah. It was um, a bunch of women sitting around that said, this is so much better than our weekly wine night, weekly edible night. Right. We're starting to get those kind of So crowds. you literally have a micro dose crowd. Yeah. And a lot of people don't realize this. It's become but they, a way more diversified market. Now. They make up a good portion of the market. And I can tell you that just from being in here because there's, with there's people with that the come in. Yeah, there's people that come in that they'll buy like an eighth and an edible. And I won't see them again for like two fucking weeks. Yeah. And they come back and they're like, oh, that was great, man. Let me get another one. I'm like, how the fuck do you manage with that? <laughs> oh, side note. I haven't been a... <clears throat> Too blunt or less smoker probably since junior high school, 13. I am a heavy smoker for recreational use, okay? I figured this out the other day, and my (laughs) wife looked at me and said, how in the fuck can you afford that? And I said, I grow good weed. I figured out that me, personally, alone, burns two ounces of weed Every week. But I could every week. That. And see, I don't, but I probably do 
Um, I burn an eighth on the podcast. Eighth, between an eighth and a quarter of dabs a week, probably. You see, that's the difference right there. I probably go through a half gram of dabs, if that, a week. Because I and like you know, my butt. You this know? explains why I don't smoke much of my own stuff. <laughs> I spend 85 to 90 percent of my week with Frank, so 90 percent of the time I'm stoned with him. I'm just, just rolling up. I was yeah. talking to somebody in the shop, and this is what made me forget that I forgot to give you your Christmas bud. I gave everyone in the shop a quarter of uh, royal cookies. Top that sounds shelf pretty good. It's really for, moist. Oh, yeah. you gave me some of that. Yeah, and uh, I went in my bef- jar. This I is what made me forget. I actually. <laughs> I went in the shop and we were talking about it and I go, you know what? I bet you out of everybody in here, I bet you Rob still has some of it left. And then I went to go ask him. I'm like, fuck, he wasn't here that day. So, so he didn't basically get any. to answer your own question, yes, I still had some left because it never showed up. So yes, I, there was some left. I did give him some today, though. <laughs> yes, and thank you. That is now going to become my office stash. Yeah, that's. Uh, it was de- I mean, we've had royal cookies in the shop before, but it was never uh, top shelf, and this one was definitely. No, we had one that was top shelf. Was it? I don't think I was here for that, but it was real good. All right. Um, I just wanna. I know that we told everybody about uh, Stump and Frank. We Ooh, got the new one other episode. Side note before we get started, um, an old friend of mine is going to be stopping in the shop either tomorrow or Thursday. Um, and the only reason I mention it is a um the piano behind you. He was the one that bought that. Okay. <clears throat> the name of the studio. I if I remember correctly, when I came up with it, it was in the apartment we shared in Park Avenue on Corning. He was the initial person I went to start all this stuff with. So he's at he um actually Frank, you've heard me talk about him. He's my buddy in Virginia. Yeah. He's actually stopping in because he needs to get some shit on his way home. Oh, no shit. Yep. Do uh, you think you might want to step in on a podcast so that we can maybe record something he's and put gonna it in on He's going to be leaving the 5th, and today he's tied up with family stuff. Mm. I mean, I can ask him if he's got the time, but What's when he... The 4th? Yeah, but when he's oh, out no, here... No, today's the 2nd. Yeah, it's the 3rd. When he is out here, he's only out for a few days, and he'll cram as much shit as he can while he's up here. He's oh. also got baby mama bullshit up oh, here to deal you with. Guys so. wanna hear some, you guys want to hear some bullshit? Um, so remember how my uh, sister got a hold of me over the yeah. fall and whatnot? And then I told you I was going on vacation, and I happened to recognize some of her pictures and realized that she lived in Virginia Beach, and I was planning a vacation there. Yeah. Tell me how I see a Facebook post from her like three days ago. <coughs> Finding a house in Connecticut is so hard. I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> so you're not even going to be there when I go down there this summer. Okay, whatever. Maybe, maybe <laughs> not. You never know. Yes. All right. Side note, done and over with. All right. Back on track. Um, Topics. Unk went and actually wrote yeah, three he was topic pages. Yesterday. We have ick tops. Ick tops. And uh, let's stay on topic, Frank. I know how you like to get dirty sometimes. Let's stay on topic. Listen, you do not want to know what happened at the casino. <laughs> oh, no. If it You'll know about nine midget, months from now, I'm sure. Or a donkey. <laughs> I mean... Uh, there was a couple of bads and uh, uh, shenanigans. Anyway, you said you had topics. Yes, I did have. To, I do have topics. Um, this one doesn't really affect you much, but I'm sure you can have some really good answers for this. Okay. Um, this is for me and Rob, kind of. Uh, no, I don't like it there. Rules for dating my daughter. Oh, shit. Mm. Listen, listen. I know several rules for dating my daughter because I had to break every one of them with my wife. <laughs> what do you think, Rob? What do you, uh, what's a couple of things that you, uh, I mean, I know yours is a little, uh, she's 10? She'll be nine, nine in March. Oh, nine. Okay. Mine, yeah. My daughter just turned 13 in, uh, oh, geez. <laughs> in November. Oh, jeez. November. So that's kind of why I brought this topic up, but. He's like, yeah, it's gotta have to worry about that. Um, something that should be talked about because uh, Ooh, I got one. It, it's going to prevent murder if you do not follow <laughs> these instructions. Well, <laughs> um, honestly, I've never really given much thought to that. My only 
real governing thing is like just don't don't be a dick bag. Like I'm kind of okay with it if uh, as long as they don't treat her like shit. Like that's my only thing. Just try to find a good person. Well, my only thing is is that I'm hoping. I'm hoping. <laughs> it's a big hope too. I'm hoping that <clears throat> my uh, ex-wife is teaching my daughter the correct way to treat a male. Um, I don't yeah. think that she knows how to do it herself, so that's going to be a hard thing. But so I tried while I was there to make sure that she knew that you know um, it's not just uh, I'm a princess and I get everything the way I want. So relationships are two way streets. That's the way it's got to be. And there is an edit point. Yeah, that was a phone call. Um, yeah, that's anyway. Not too bad. That's not, that's um, so uh, number one on on my list is uh, I mean it, it depends on of course how old her boyfriend is or how old that her mother allows her to date. Um, I always said 14 was a good, I mean, at least an age to start dating. I don't know, you know, like mom drops us off at the movie type shit. Yeah. Um, but number one on my list is you must have a job. Um, like I said, that's definitely age, age appropriate. Uh, right. You can't be four, yeah, 14 and, and have a job. Like, um, when I was 14, I had a job. Uh, I had a, paper route and yeah they can't uh, even really do that anymore though can they it's kind of bullshit <coughs> i think um, i i think i delivered the highlights when i was 11 you know what i'm saying <coughs> <coughs> i worked at a grocery store doing the cart thing and um also like the cans and bottles when people would bring them in i was allowed to do that um, my first job though I got it it was uh at EOP it was called the AVE program. I don't you guys are probably too young for that. Um but the the job was actually uh they hire you when you're 14. Um they give you your working papers. And I can't remember what it was called but Montour had about the same thing. My brother got into that when he was 14. They teach you how no. to fill out job applications no. and make um no. resumes and cover letters <coughs> and and shit like that. And you, oh, you get paid minimum wage just to do that. Uh, oh, so that was my first job. Um but shit doing anything, man. Um you can get jobs under the table at any farm. It's hard work right there. If if you if you could you, on the you come and farm. tell me that you want to date my daughter and you you're the first thing you tell me is you're a farmer or you you do farming, um, I'm that's a plus for me. That means that you're a hard ass worker because I, I mean, think that speaks more about being a driven person. Is it? It really doesn't matter if it's a laborious job or even a desk job. As long as they're driven, you know that there's always going to be something to take care of them. Right, but what I'm saying is, I mean, you know that farmers are, are hardworking people. I mean, oh, yeah. Most of them do it they their whole life. Be. Like, yeah. they're, they're born doing A lot that, of them so. it's initially stems from necessity. Um, a lot of them also still use the trade and barter system that, like, I don't want to say under the table, but I guess you'd say that because I don't think they, Not really they cash tax. transactions. Right, it's like... Uh, like, I'll trade you this if you My give me eggs those. for uh, two bags of your cow shit. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, all right. Um, number two. This is a true statement. He um, must. <laughs> you must. <coughs> you must understand that chances are I don't like you. <laughs> It's a given. I mean, let's be serious. I have been, uh, I'm married, right? Well, and let's I've... actually make a slight amendment to that. Um, instead of not liking you, I odds are I will like you, but there's a part of me that won't fully trust you. Right, right. Just mm -hmm. in that off chance that something does go sideways. Well, it kind of brings me to number seven, which it, it's kind of connected to that one, and, and it's it, she's my prin uh, my princess, not your conquest. <coughs> um, don't think that my daughter is going to give it up because 
she better not. If I if find out. If Maria is anything like me, it would be kind of a conquest for the other person because it's hard to get my attention in that regard. If she's anything like I am, it's going to be the same thing. It's going to take someone kind of particular well, to catch her. Yeah, well, I can't really uh, say too much without... Um, I don't want to say too much about my my ex-wife if you know if my kids listen but um if she's anything like her mom i'm in trouble anything if she's anything like her mom anything she definitely her looks like her um looks like her mom to a t um but number three um i am everywhere and so are my people i will find out things that you don't think i will find out and when I find out, I will kill you. <laughs> Let's well, not go that far. Th- You'll that's have one somebody thing, do it for you. That, that's one thing I wouldn't have to blatantly state, because me and Maria are really, really close. So I think the fact that she's close with Dad would be enough to kind of intimidate some people. Yeah. Uh, see, my daughter, we've never been, like, hip to hip or anything, but we've always had this kind of understanding, like... Uh, you know, she f- always fought me on the, the clothes thing. Yeah. Like, you know, I always, every day, shirt test, lift your arms up if I could see stomach. Matter of fact, I told her to go throw that shit away. Um, and her mom didn't really like that either, but. Well, hey, I mean, in that, that regard, I, I'm kind of on the fence on that because her mom, when she was in better shape, that's how she used to like to dress. But she was, she's not one of those people that sleeps around her. It's well, really all that promiscuous. She just likes the feeling of looking, the empowering feeling of it. Well, to me, I, I also think that uh, I'm I'm on the fence with that because I... Yeah, I think that comes back to who, as, who the role model in her life right now is. As much as they say that, you know, some men will say that they don't stare at women like a piece of meat. It's I'm kind sorry of, if you are a man. Even once in your life, you have. Uh, that's what I mean. Like it's kind <coughs> of like. Even if you're a woman, same thing applies. Exactly. We're all animalistic in that regard. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, I now have a uh, um, a girlfriend who is uh, a little on the jealous side, so. Uh, she catches me if I look too hard, for sure. Um, so I try not to do that. I've never really been one for that, though. Like, the girls would point it out to me. Oh, shit, did you see that chick's ass? And No, yeah, I wasn't wasn't really looking at that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> said we have oh, the same days as women. So, I know. I mean, it's it was kind of the same with me and my ex-wife as well. Uh, she, she did the same thing. Um, I mean, it's kind of nice. That way you don't get in trouble for looking. If anything, you can be like, hey, over here, look at this one. <laughs> look at this way. It's a little bit of a bonding moment. You can be perverts together. It, you can, but then again, it brings it back to like, what if that was your daughter? Uh, that's why I'm glad to have a boy. I mean, <laughs> that same thing, same thing goes. Women are just as bad as men, if not, oh, if not worse. No, I've always been the type of person like people always say, well, how young will you go? 18. Well, what about your daughter? If your daughter was 18 dating a 45 year old man, here's the thing she's 18. That's the dichotomy. <laughs> that, that's where the issue is. It doesn't matter what. Why am I a pervert? Because I like that's your that preference. I, I now, like an 18 year old, and obviously she either likes me back or there's something. Yeah. Oh. So she's got daddy issues. Fuck Come you. On. Just you know fuck well, I mean, not even that. Like, well, even if she's eighteen and she finds someone in their forties attractive, oh, then that happens to be what it is. Now, the character of that person is ultimately what the factor should be. And if she's raised right, it'll be a good person. Right, and and I've I've definitely met. I mean, yeah, quite a, a few a odd, younger but, women that have had good heads on their shoulder and i hate hate saying positive things about this woman but my ex-wife it was one of the reasons why i got with her is because she had a really good head on her shoulder she was uh 20 
22 or something <coughs> like that when we got together and she one of her jobs was uh she was the the chick that would go up to gas stations and would ask for a pack of cigarettes and oh she'd be the stick right right and um when they'd give it to her like she'd ha- just hand him a red card like that's all she would do hand him a red card and walk out and then oh, no she would like write a little report based on <coughs> that specific place cuz i think they got a warning for the first time second time uh, no. it was a it was a you know a, yeah. a fine of some kind but anyways, nugget. she had a good head on her shoulders for for as young as she was. She owned her own house before I, okay. you know, um, she was always a, a hard worker. That I definitely gave to her. That's the best thing about her. Uh, everything else sucks. <laughs> he said she's just a bitch. Uh, I mean, I love you. No, you no, don't. No, I don't. I don't. No, you don't. Matter of fact, I had to tell her the other day that I really have no desire to ever see you ever again like i don't like i really it kind of sucks every time i see my daughter that's all i see it's like yeah i don't want to see your fucking face yeah i don't know what i ever did i'm like i don't hate you i just don't want to fucking see you you know what i mean it's you pissed me off bitch. what did i, I mean... do what did i ever do to you you were the biggest fucking letdown of my entire life you threw me in the the garbage, basically. Yeah. 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 Makes sense to me. It's cool. You know, whatever. Thank you. I'm way better off now. <laughs> Fuck it. I've told her that so many times. Thank you. And she gets mad. Um, what are you doing over there? All right. Trying to take um, all the shake out. So number four on my list is, and I'm sure um, this is something that Rob, even though he's a little guy, I'm, I can definitely see him. Um, if you make her cry, uh, I'm yeah. going to make you cry. Yeah. Um, there's many ways that I can do that. Yeah. We won't talk about it. <laughs> I've already kind of had a few issues like that when she was really, really little. And it took nothing more than me raising my voice to people to get shit done. I may be yeah. nice and quiet, but I'm sorry you do not fuck with that kid's well-being. Yeah, I don't like that with any of my kids either. I mean, most people don't. Nobody. I mean, everyone has their own situations, but I definitely would go to a school and choke a kid out if he tries to fucking bully my kids, man. I definitely would be that guy. Without hesitation. I mean, at the you same time... You want to bully my kid? And then bring your mom and mom and dad on. We'll fucking punch them as well. I mean, at the same time, I'd love to see her handle it herself, but there is still that I don't, fatherly thing. Which is part of the reason why I took my son, oldest son, out of regular school because... He knows, and he's been to so many of my MMA practices and everything, and the wrestling practices well, that, that I he, really... he's actually a, kind of a threat in and of himself. Right, and except for he's liability. not... Right, I feel like... He, uh, he's more than capable of taking care of he's himself. He's that one that would hurt someone, and I Without don't, even... I don't want to... Yeah, yeah. I don't want that to happen. It's he's overqualified um, of doing it. But, and he seems but like it would a, be a boiling point, too. Like, yeah, yeah, he, he seems would, like a really nice kid. He seems like he the really kid that is. would get yeah. bullied. Yeah. yeah. He, he does get bullied, and that's why I took him out. And, and he's actually, like, it, it almost came to that. And that's why I took him out, because... Yeah, I like it. He it's seems like not going to just create a problem with him in school. It's going to create a problem outside of school, because yeah. I will take care of it with their parents. And I don't... <laughs> which is... Uh, Mm, number eight on my list i'm not afraid to go to prison yeah no <laughs> i will do anything i have to for my kid uh, especially my daughter if, if I, th- yeah that doesn't matter if it's a daughter or I mean, a son my well yeah either of your kids but what i'm saying is that i know that both of my sons could handle themselves if they have to to where like i wouldn't want my daughter to be even in that situation yeah, yeah. Um, I wouldn't want her to be jumped by 
eight girls and get fucked up over uh, a hairbrush or uh, you sat behind me in fucking math class and my friend was supposed to sit there. Like, I mean, it's dumb shit. Um, I found out that one of my friends son last year got his fucking shoes stolen do you know how much that pisses me off dude like yeah they took his shoes and i'm like he could have handled it too but well i mean shit like that's always been going on shit like that happened when we were kids like some things kind of don't change let some kid try to steal my fucking kid's shoes it, that's going to be what a serious is issue. That? It's Frank. He's working on the plumbing. The other Frank. Oh, okay. That guy. I, that was the second or third time I've heard that today. I forgot he was here doing that. Um, This one's kind of uh, been at the top of the li- or You know, it's just kind of a basic thing. It's, it's kind of a respect thing. Be home 15 minutes early. I mean... Don't be late. Um, I also I be so concerned about being late as with if you're going to either be late or what, just keep you in, keep me in the loop. Be responsible enough to be like, hey, I'm going to be a little late because we got tied up with this. I see that, but <coughs> it, it needs to be a, a respect thing. Like, I need you to be home. I'm not going to be that guy that's going to be like, uh, be home at 930, you know, like. I'm going to give you plenty of time, so you should be able to be home Well, that's also why early. I mentioned, like, especially in the day and age we live in, kids have cell phones by that point. They do have the ability, and it is a, resp- a responsible action to be like, hey, I'm going to be a little late. But yeah, no, there is definitely a cutoff point, though, where it's like, yeah, no, you definitely cross the line. But that's got to play part of it, too. Because I can tell you, especially coming from having a parent that was, like, that black and white about it, no, it doesn't work out in the long run. Right. Well, you got to I mean... you, you gotta let them, I don't know how I want to put it, it's like, I guess give them a little bit of respect that they'll do the right thing, and they'll give it in return. Well, I mean, kind of, well... Trust. Yes. In the same yes. token, I also put be 15 min- minutes early to the date. You know, don't make her wait for you. Oh, yeah, no. You're definitely, um, like, showing up early to things is a good thing. Right. Well, they're both a good thing. It both it, it shows a, um, a sign Punctuality. Of, 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 yeah, and, the, and when you're young like that, like, that's one of the things that I, I personally think that it's important to teach. Yeah. Punctuality is... I mean, I'm not going to lie, I'm I'm horrible with it now, but it's usually not my fault. It's more of like uh, I'm doing some shit for somebody else and it makes me late because... Yeah, that's I usually what my thing is. being thrown off my uh, my regular schedule because then I it makes me late. I don't like to be late. All my clocks are set ahead. Every clock is set ahead. I just get stuck okay. behind. You all right, Frank? Yeah, just picking up nuggets. Rush. He had a few rogue nugs. <laughs> look, uh, I got the shake out. Most of it, yeah. Look, I got fucking half a dish of shake. Damn. So, so I was telling, uh, I told Rob about this, but yeah, not to interrupt. Oh, Frank, can you move your coffee? Yeah. I asked you that last time. Don't make him punch you, Frank. Yes. That's the only piece of one of, other than some of the other ones that blatantly get plugged into the wall. The head on top, you can go ahead and use the coffee as a coffee rack right. if you like, because that's going to get replaced. It's a piece of crap. But the cab, not that's the offspring. Ow. Um, oh, god damn. I got you. I moved it. I moved it. Fuck. Shit. No, fucking the other day I told Dan I was out of Jerry's and fucking... Uh, oh, yeah, sure. He, told he just me. fucking poured a whole fucking bag into my jar. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> Um, let's finish up this one, guys, yes. and then we'll take a quick break, because, um... My legs gotta... are falling asleep. Um, let's see. This one's kind of obvious. It's, it kind of goes with the other one, man. Um, if you lie to me about anything, I'll find out. You know, just, like, my people are everywhere. So I'll find yeah. out. I'll find out one way or another. Um, 
And then, like I said, that, I don't mind going to prison. And then this one, um, I definitely got from, um, if ever, anyone's seen the movie Bad Boys. With Martin Lawrence. And, Not uh, a long ass time. But yeah, I've seen um, it. This last one is, uh, you have to meet all of her uncles. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? When he took, took the yeah. boy into the garage and they're all in there lifting weights and shit. Yep. I have all you guys all in one little area, like polishing guns and these whatnot. These are her uncles, just so you know. <laughs> we we'll just be sitting there polishing guns, you know. I don't know. Maybe having some monicum of intelligence probably wouldn't be a bad thing either. Uh, yeah. Let's face yeah. it. If they bring them around and they don't have a like. If they're an absolute fucking meathead and you can literally make fun of him to his face. Yeah, they're yeah, like no. complete No, you know me. Morons. I'm going to do that. Oh, no I would what. too. <clears throat> I'm going to have to warn her. Like, you better tell him. I'm yeah, going to make fun him. of him. I'm going to pick on both you guys. I'm going to tell yeah, him. Like, that's the thing. Like, even if they have like a slightly dead personality, if I could hold a conversation with them, I, I, I can at least get by with that. I'm going to tell but him that. But if they're that, dumb uh, with no personality, no, no, get the fuck out of here, you wet blanket. That's what I feel like. You would, right now. You would literally. Which, let's face it, which would kind of surprise me because even Frank knows my daughter's got like a big right. ass personality. Right, right, but like honestly, honestly, I don't mean to say it like that, but if your daughter was with somebody like that, what would be your first thought? You'd look at her and be like, why are you with him? He's not smart. He's not funny. What could he possibly have? And then you're going to get mad. No, you know not, necess- not necessarily. <laughs> uh, not necessarily. She might have a damn good reason for it. That's true. Be like, he's really, really nice. I mean, I'm going to talk shit about her, too. I'm going to say, hey, uh, just so you know, don't let her take her shoes off. I love you to death, but I tell her this all the time. Love you to death, but you got the stankiest ass feet I've ever known in my entire life, dude. Sweaty. She used to get home from school and take her shoes off and, like, run around on the hardwood floor and leave wet sweat marks like she just stepped in a bucket of water and <coughs> ran around. Ew. Damn. It was gross, dude. It was All right. gross. Are we done? Yes. All right, let's take this break. We'll see you guys soon. <coughs> All righty, we'll be back. Buds and Studs, your one-stop chronic gift shop, located at 2119 Grand Central Avenue. Stop in and give us a call at 607-735-2960. We'll make it short-winded. Um, if you want, just kind of screw up next and to we're back with yeah, the Phone back. Tap Podcast. This is Random Talk by Unc it's, Frank I and can roll out of Rob. Way. So Unc wants uh, um, Cedric's well, input real quick on a it's, topic. It's just a, I want to... And maybe... How do I put it? I'm in a cut-you-off kind of mood today. I want to do... I want to... Uh, maybe an urban... Opinion. Hey, bud. The the to- actual topic is like either typical meals that you ate as a kid, here, bud, or typical meals that you still you eat wanna today. Him, smack him with that; it'll get the point across, <laughs> but it won't hurt him too bad. Ah, <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ! <laughs> Did you hear any of that, Frank? Or were you too busy playing with the balls? Yes, I want you want to know what kind of meals he ate as a that, kid. Well, all of us. I want I'm, different, it's kind of like different an opinion, like things that you ate so, when you were a kid. Hang on, or, hang on, hang on. I got a better way to put this. Where'd you grow up as a kid? I grew up in Elmira. <laughs> oh, okay. Where'd you grow up? Uh, I grew up in Elmira slash Williamsport. Okay. So I bet you anything, you guys probably ate at the same places spent, and did the same things. I spent half of my time growing up in Texas, though. Oh, well, yeah, actually, this, n- yeah, now I am intrigued. So what kind of? We had, like, catfish, you know, like, oh. southern food. You Ooh. Don't really, they cook the Jumbo, food. gumbo, like, jambalaya. Like, we got Popeyes out here, but Popeyes out here is, like, mid compared to Yo, that's, that's what I keep hearing. Everybody who tells me they've been down south, they're like, yo, our Popeyes is bullshit. Same with, um, like, Dairy Queen. It, in all the reality. I agree, Dairy Queen is Dairy way Queen better is down south. Very, very oh, yeah. Down here. Yeah. <laughs> 
dairy slop. Anyway, so yeah, what was it like uh, as a kid? Like, did you cook your own meals? Or did, did you have a mom, dad that cooked meals for you? My mother was very gifted in the kitchen, so I, I was blessed when it came to that. And I also had my grandmother as well. Oh, there you but, go. Um, a few of the meals I remember, like beef stroganoff, that was one of my yep. favorites. Um, I make a pretty good beef stroganoff myself. Um, yeah, me um, too, also. The casserole with yep. the peas in it. Ah, peas. fuck these. <laughs> fuck these. I, I hate, hate these. fucking Hey, at least peas have a nutritional what, what value. True. Like, as if you didn't even taste it. You know what I mean? So, Cedric, you lost me with one word. What's that? Casserole. Hey. I it fucking is, hate casseroles. You know why? Because 98% of, of them are made with cream of mushroom. Yeah. And I hate cream of mushroom. <laughs> You can always substitute it for cream of celery or, or cream, cream of chicken. chicken. Let, me, let me explain something to you. Mushrooms are bad enough. Why in the fuck? Mushrooms Why? help you build your uh, immune system up. Mushrooms are nasty. They are gross. They taste like cow shit. At least the ones that okay, I eat. So what are some <laughs> of the things that Regina used to cook when you were a kid, Frank? Pasta, tuna noodle, casserole. <laughs> yep. I actually uh, like that. Uh, <laughs> so I am proud to say that um, I learned how to cook at a young age, around, you know, 11 or 12, because I didn't like... I don't think my mom listens to this. I don't like my mother's cooking. <laughs> I've, even as a kid, even when I was a kid, when you're supposed to be like, oh my God, my mom's cooking. Oh, it was so good. My stepdad oh my God, was, God, the, was so bad. One that always was the one that taught me to cook, and he is a fantastic fucking cook. Yeah, that's who taught me how to cook. My mom's, uh, the last fiance that she had before he died, he was the head chef at a, uh, Ithaca College there before he got cancer and whatnot. Have a good one, Seth. And everybody, said right, is buddy, leaving the, the building. Ho, 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 ho. Mm. <laughs> Later, bud. Right. We'll see you tomorrow, bro. But, um, so he was head chef at Elmira, or, yeah, Elmira, <laughs> Ithaca College for a while. And uh, he actually taught me a lot about cooking. And my mom... My mom can cook. It's just the things that she chooses to cook, I don't like. And she knows this. And she's like, oh, I thought you liked this, Mom. I tell you every single fucking time. I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't like it. I'll just go hungry. I Like, for real. I don't like it. Oh, I thought you liked that. No, that's my brother. And then she literally cooks me something or cooks my brother something when I'm not there. Oh, I thought you liked that. No, that's Frank. I don't like this shit at all. But that's my mom for you. Uh, you don't have that on the bigger jobs. Sometimes you know, that's like actually it. always why I've been disappointed with any kitchen job I've ever had. I grew up cooking with my stepdad and I still cook that way at home. And any kitchen job I've ever had is nowhere near that hands-on. Stop yeah, standard. And they want you to cook their way. It's like, not... that, that's one thing I understand because that's how they get the uniformity and things. But most of the places don't even require you to have basic knife skills. Yo, I'm sorry. Like Every kitchen I've ever worked at, I've always put people in awe with my... Knife handling. I'm 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 sorry, it's not but that hard. I'm sorry, but when most recently my last kitchen job, I'm working at Olive Garden. Oh God! And and uh, the knives weren't cutting, and somebody said to me, "Well, I don't know where the electric knife sharpener is. I can't get these knives to cut." And on the Serena. wall, well, no, on the, on the wall, literally oh, on yeah, the wall, those are hanging. there was big long steel. Well, and they looked at me and said, what do I do with that? And I pulled it out, and I got the knife just a little bit wet, and I went, 
Ting, 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 ting. It's called a whetstone. Oh, uh, hey, well, go. no, it's a, it's a steel. Yeah. Every kitchen has one. Yeah. Or it should. They try, They got rid of them. That's why they disappeared. Because the one manager we had said, oh, those are ineffective. Like, I'm sorry, they've been a standard and a staple in every kitchen for a couple hundred years. Um, they're, they're, they're ineffective. No. They do have knife holders now that actually have... Um, Knife sharpeners in the holder, so like yeah. you can pull it in and out of the holder, and it sharpens it. Like yeah. yeah, but I believe that every, even every cook, you can't call yourself a cook unless you know how to use a fucking knife at yeah. bare minimum. <clears throat> no, I'm sorry, it. I'm sorry, because there are some people I've seen that can use a knife. They know how to cut, but they cannot sharpen their own fucking knife if you do not know how to sharpen your kitchen knife i'm not, I'm not even talking about a then pocket you knife don't fully have knife you're not handling a cook skills you're not a cook that's why i said the basics of knife handling so like sharpening and maintaining you got to be able to sharpen your basic. knife because sharpening a pocket knife is a lot different than that sharpening a kitchen, a kitchen knife. yes way different do you see how frank gets off topic well, I'm not helping any, because I mean, well, even you come from a culinary background, so I mean, it's not like something we don't all do. And so, what did your parents feed you when you were younger? Um, something that you ate like regularly. Well, one thing that I still make to this day, my mother hated it, but she always used to make homemade mac and cheese. She'd make it for us because we liked it, and I still make it, but I've thus mutated the recipe since and it's a little more bougie hey, if you will you want to uh, know the best part about all that rob do you have any medical conditions that make it so you really shouldn't eat your mac and cheese yes i'm lactose intolerant <laughs> as fuck <laughs> don't care this motherfucker be chowing on that mac and cheese oh too. my god it's so good <laughs> i didn't even write, write mac and cheese down that is one that, <laughs> that, uh, we ate a lot as well. <laughs> the one thing i need to get in touch with my stepdad though i haven't talked with him in years um his chicken and biscuits he beat them <laughs> off homemade oh my chicken and biscuits God. is on the list chicken yep. and, um, chicken and rice is also on that list like um chicken and rice home style you know like with chicken Yo, gravy and i make chinese you want to know my favorite fucking meal and i shit you not that my mom used to make <laughs> meatloaf Fuck no, because I hate the way my mom makes it, but I I, just hate meatloaf. I make oh you I, I like the music, meatloaf. I don't like the food. Yeah, we've had like this both. we've had me and Frank have had this discussion before. I just find meatloaf unappealing on so many <coughs> fucking levels. Not only do I not like the taste <coughs> of it, but there is something to me that is wrong with meat shaped like a loaf of fucking bread. What if I mold it into a turkey and cook it? I've actually seen a fi- a foot. You know that actually before. might do it. That would be fucking cool. I've seen a foot loaf. Someone made one for. Oh Halloween yes, one I've, year. Seen, I've seen where, those too. Where where the, the, would you eat a foot? The toenails. Yeah. I don't know. That would be kind of weird. <laughs> I don't know. It's just been a turn off. I don't like. I don't like meatloaf. It's kind. Of, what about what if I made steak? titties? Eh, not so much. I would bury myself between some meatloaf titties. I don't know why, but just <laughs> ground beef meals generally aren't. Yeah, I love ne- Salisbury never, steak. Not the frozen ones, like no. homemade. <laughs> I, that's probably why Salisbury I've never steaks. had a good Salisbury steak. It's um, always been what the about frozen one? or shitty ones. What about Sloppy Joe's? Oh, God, yeah. I hate Those are still Joe's. a staple really? at home now. Maria so, loves them. So I have yeah. a problem. No, me I will do. use. Maria doesn't like them. <laughs> I will use onion powder. And uh, pepper powders and pepper flakes and onion because flakes. And barbecue sauce. I love the taste of it. You know what I'm saying? As soon as I bite into a whole pepper or a whole onion or a whole tomato, there's something about it. It's a, it's a texture thing. I think I might be slightly on the dumb side. I, I don't know because Des has said the di- but same fucking thing. As soon as I bite into it, it Fucking turns my stomach. And just I your want palate, to Frank. Your uh, palate's oh all fucked up, dude. It's it, so it, bad. Or it could be you just haven't had them prepared the right way. Because Dez has said that for years. It's and so guess bad. what? 
She will now eat onions, mushrooms, and peppers and things as long as I yeah, cook. So will my son too, and certain things he will as well. Or, or is it, um, oh, is it no. stuff you make specifically? It's, I mean, or is it just certain dishes? Just well, in it, it prob most of the time it was because of something that I made, and now it was probably he'll made eat it, it the right way, right. So, Unc, we're running on 50 minutes. Do you want to go to a new topic, or you want to finish out this one? What was your um, childhood food? food? Well, I mean, a lot of the stuff that we've already mentioned, um, I had meatloaf a lot, um, spaghetti and meatballs. Um, yeah, spaghetti was big in my house, Italian yeah. family. Tuna nuda casserole definitely was. We had fried too. chicken. Yeah, I had that about once a week and puked every fucking not, time. Not that often. We had gross. fried chicken. Uh, my grandmother used to make baked chicken a lot, which was good. Um, <coughs> it's fried chicken. Chicken uh -huh. fried steak. Uh, it's beef, baked fried chicken. I am German. Beef stroganoff is another, um, yep, even though another um, fuck it's German. But, or, I mean, it's Russian, but it's something that. The Germans yes, also Eastern eat. European. Right. Stroke me off, beef. Um, all right, well, let's get to the Stump Frank. I got a couple of other things on here, but we can get to those in the next. Um... There, there we is. go. Right. We got a Stump Frank going on. Let me get a... Wow, 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 wow. Ready? All right. Yep. You got to get three out of five. I got to get three out of five? Yes. So that's a 60%. Yes. Damn. It's easier than high school. I dropped out. Ready? Question one. True or false? The longer you hold your head in, the higher you get. Mm. Mm -hmm. That depends on what you mean. So, say you went like this. Hit it like a cigarette. Then yeah, you need to hold your head in. But no, that is technically false. 98% uh, of uh, all the THC in the smoke absorbs into your lungs through your capillaries within uh, three seconds. Yep, three milliseconds. You're or no, correct. three full seconds. It's yes. not milliseconds. I thought it, I swear it said three milliseconds. <laughs> Did it? I'm pretty sure it's three full Maybe seconds. Maybe that was for a dab. Yeah. That sounds more right, because considering one's a concentrate and one's not. All right. So we got that one right. Good job. Yeah. It depends on what you mean. You do have to hold it, but only three seconds. And then you got, like, all of it. We have a slight latency. Did you notice that? I was hitting the wrong buttons. <laughs> no, I got... There isn't much latency. All right. Number two. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, no, there isn't. No, we're good on latency. Sorry. Okay. What? Let's just be me. What causes dab sweats? Dab sweats? Like when you take a dab and you start sweating? Yeah. Um, if I'm not mistaken, isn't it the flood of cannabinoids to the CB2 receptor? It makes you hot. It uh, fucks with something in your brain. The, um, uh, the, oh, I can't remember the part of your brain that it works on, but it controls your temperature. Uh, no. No. What is it? The answer is, um, when you're inhaling the dab, it, because it's a concentrate, your lungs only take so much at once. So all the fluids in your lungs are working together to make more room for you to be able to breathe. So because of that, it's making your body work faster and harder. So you sweat. Mm. I mean, you're, you were on the right track, but not quite. Okay. It's more of a respiratory response. Yeah, it's, a, it's, it's your bio, lungs. Bio, your lungs doing more than they want to at one time. It's biomechanical, not bio. So it's, in essence, when I hit this. Biochemical. There we go. That's two and a half milligrams of THC. Versus when I hit a dab, I'm putting 60 milligrams of THC into my lungs. They've right. got to process a lot more mm. at once. Right. Okay. Right. Makes sense. All right. So we're one for one. Okay. <clears throat> what do I win? 
<laughs> Just bragging rights. Yeah. Uh, how long do the effects of a dab hit typically last? And when I say typically, um, like uh, between this and this. It so. varies anywhere from one to two hours typically. It can wear off as little as 45 minutes for like a vapor cartridge, an inhaled cartridge. A dab hit usually lasts about 90 minutes, but you can feel the effects of about for about two hours inhaled smoke what we typically do which is smoking dabbing and vaping typically lasts for 90 minutes but it can last up to two hours um law enforcement will try to tell you that you're still high after three or four hours but medical science says that um between 90 to 95 percent of the cannabinoid metabolites are are metabolized between 90 minutes to two hours so you're half right. What? Um, it is actually uh, one hour to three hours is medical. Um, it yeah, but that's conflicting the, information. Well, it is just because it actually depends on the percentage of the THC of yeah. the dab that you're doing. Well, actually, um, so, so that has actually been refuted. Um, you know how they say you take more, you'll be higher longer. That's not true. Um, you take more and you have a more intense high, uh, yeah, but I was gonna say, doesn't it the just duration, intensity yeah, it, it infects intensity. It doesn't affect the duration of the high. And that is actually new information coming out just this year. You know what I'm saying? Like we haven't been able to do very many medical studies. Oh, speaking of that, did you realize that the federal government actually authorized a big name university to, um, uh, to actually do a federal authorized study on marijuana with over 10,000 participants. Really? It's the first time since the 70s that the government has had, like the federal government has had such a large study on marijuana. Yeah, but aren't they only accepting people who have never smoked marijuana? Yes, and they're testing them for over a year. That, from that's actually new smart, user to because you got to think with user. it being illegal on that high of a level, even like some of the inf like all the information Frank's learning, I'm more than certain a good chunk of these case studies. So are we'll give us each a half a point decade, for that. Just because scientists can't study it because it's illegal on such a high level. They can't that there's no information on that. Same thing with uh treating <coughs> veterans with <coughs> LSD um mush actually LSD is just uh, straight well, out they're of the actually question. trying to do molly first <laughs> mushrooms molly and all that shit the reason that they've had such a hard time doing that is because they are also schedule 1 narcotics on the you know same level as heroin and crack and shit yeah, like that what which they are not is that, that bad. illegal they can't even be studied for scientific purposes well, yes they can but you but have not to but on like human yes yes they can but the amount <coughs> of hoops that you have to jump through it doesn't make it worth it Exactly. That's why I'm saying Listen, it's not. They've got to jump through a hoop. Studied. They've got to jump through this hoop and then parachute down to this hoop and then <laughs> grab the hand glider back to this hoop and then take the fucking spaceship up to circle the earth back to China to jump through this hoop yeah. to make sure so that they got their dick sucked on the other side of the world so that they can put a dick in their ass back in this side of the yep. world to jump through the other hoop that the other guy had while he was getting his dick sucked by the girl under the counter yeah, getting her ass plowed um, that's why they're only taking people that have not smoked in their lifetime and doing it over a duration because apart from like some of the more recent studies that are being done in the legal states everything else is based on anecdotal evidence oh, Jesus, baby. he didn't even react <laughs> i heard everything you said i'm sorry i was too busy laughing i didn't even hear what made you guys all laugh. right question number four Nope. I was already lost in my own train of fucking thought. All when right. you listen to that, you are going to die. More than likely. Question number four. True or false? Yes, I do smoke weed every day. There is a medical condition known as bong lung. I have never in my life heard of that. I want to say that's but correct. I'm going to say it's true. 
you are correct. Never in my life heard of that. Well, but no, actually, that's a good example. That's why um the tar from uh, yes, I brought out my bowl for an example. The tar <laughs> from marijuana is not as bad as nicotine because here's the thing: this bowl, all that's gonna clean out, right? I can scrape that out. Now, so, if this was a tobacco pipe, none of that would come out. Right. It would take a lot more work for that to happen. So, Unc, let so me ask you a question. So, collects in your lungs can settle in the bottom, but I'm also so certain you've had, like, those gnarly stoner coughs where you've coughed shit up. Oh, my God. That's the because that's, that the, re- hurt too. that's the resin you on your know, lungs coming out. You want to know the best medical science on... Uh, Resin from marijuana versus resin from it's cigarettes actually a cleaning form out your lungs. Of, uh, not COPD. What's the <coughs> other one? What uh, before what COPD? Does it do? What does it do? What are the symptoms of bong lung? I know you looked it up. It's uh, <coughs> what hmm. what does it do to a person? They can't okay, smoke a bong, it's right? Got something to do with the moisture in your the lungs water or vapors. something because it can. Any, it, hang on, it can so cause pneumonia. pneumonia. Yep, it can cause pneumonia in the long run. But it's listen. Listen, I knew that that was true, and you both should have known that I knew that was true. Yeah, do I know, you but know why? At the same time, you do hit bongs. No, it's not me. It's not me. You're Think a about it. There's a bong. Think about it. Think about it. Every time he comes around, I say he can't smoke a bong because he'll end up with pneumonia. PJ. PJ. Oh, he's told me that for years. Every time he smokes something with water or vapor in it, he will get a cold or I, pneumonia. But I don't think that's ever come up till now. I've, yeah, I didn't I know that. Really, I've, I've told, I've told everybody. Weird, I, I didn't know that. When we were in the podcast, we tried to hand him one of those, and I said, "Don't hit that. It's got water in it." I must have been busy with something else at the time. Swear to God, that's how I knew that because I didn't okay. know that it was a termed yeah, medical condition, but I know somebody know. with it. That is good to know. All right, you got that one right. Um, we both got that right. Ooh, question number five. This one's kind of a. Uh, so out don't there I already have two and a half? Uh, yes, yeah. you have two and a half. So you so have to get the, this one right. This is the deciding one. You've got two and a half too, then. This is the clinch. <laughs> well, you're not no, trying to stump one. myself. I'm trying to stump you. So you either win or lose. <laughs> that's true. And if I win, I get the big dick award. I'll have to take and it back. This is an Steve. actual question that it's not a um a qu- uh, the answer is not like a wide open answer like you would think it would be. Um ready. Yes. Uh what happens to your brain when you fall asleep high on marijuana, of course. I know it suppresses dreams. That is one thing it does. That's why I don't remember any of Yeah, so marijuana suppresses dreams when you fall asleep. Yes. Um, I believe it depresses your brain. I don't think it allows you to enter a full REM sleep stage. You can't enter yeah, a full REM, REM, REM stage s- yeah. sleep. You are correct. That's what I thought. And that's why when I um, sober up, when I'm asleep, I wake up. They also say that sometimes when you sober up, like if you go um, a day or so without smoking, that you can remember some of your dreams that you had the days that you were high. There was an instance that I was in. I've mentioned this before when I had that DUI and couldn't smoke. Um, In that entire three months, I could not smoke. I remembered why I'm glad it suppresses my dreams. <laughs> Yeah, I your got some worst, fucked up ones your like that worst too. nightmare is an average dream for me. I'm glad I don't remember See, any of I my take dreams. a lot of meds and you would think that I would have nightmares, but honestly I can't I, I mean they say that you don't remember your dreams and shit, but I've never yeah, I, I don't remember ever having a nightmare. Like, especially with the medications I'm on. Like I have so really It was so, really bad when I was a teenager. So, he has like bad like nightmares, almost like night terrors. Yeah. When I was a child, I used to have sleepwalking night terrors. Yeah, I've never sleptwalked. Sleepwalking, sleepwalking night terrors. Sleepwalk. Is that like when sleepwalk? you sleepwalk? wake up and go put your balls on the drum set? No, that's like when you're in a nightmare that's so fucking scary 
that your body wakes up and starts like literally defending itself. Like you're running away from monsters and shit in oh, your no, sleep. Oh no, I've had quite a few of those. You know not what I'm saying? Not like run but away. Like but like you're doing it in real life. I'm yeah. sleepwalking, doing what I was doing in oh, my no, dream. Oh no, wake me up. And like that climbing like, walls and shit. Like literally my mom when I was a kid, I climbed up one of our fucking walls because I was trying to get away from something. And I was still asleep. And I'm screaming, just yelling because no, it's would fucking wake me terrifying. Up. I, no? It'd never get to the point where no. I'd actually I slept sleep through it walk. all. Like if I responded to no. a dream or something, I and it was bad enough, and it'd wake me up. As I got like older, the falling dreams. As I got older, the sleepwalking stopped. But like, I would still wake up in the middle of the night and like do things. Like, I would wake up and like wake up, sit fucking straight up right eyes open look right at you have a conversation with you tell you some of the most fucked up shit you've ever heard and then go right back to sleep not even remember and then yep i wake up the next morning and somebody would talk to me and be like yo what the fuck were you talking about last night i was like wait what do you what do you mean i slept last night and they're like no you did not you had a 45 minute conversation with me i said that wasn't me bro they're like dude you were looking at me subconscious and I was like, dude, I was not awake. I was asleep the entire time. They're like, no, you weren't. You woke up in your bed and you fucking sat up and you had a conversation. I was like, no, I did not. You had a dream dream with a different part of my consciousness. I, right. You had a conversation with a different part of my consciousness. Right. People always would get fucking freaked out English. about it. The last time I had an episode like that, I guess I woke up in the middle of the night uh, when I was about like 24. Four, I guess, and I started doing jumping jacks next to the side of the bed. And you want to know what's weird? Out. <laughs> you want to know what's weird? If I had known you at that time and been around for that, not I don't mean it in a in a fuck with you kind of way. I would have played along with it just to kind of see for curiosity's sake where it would go. Apparently, some of my conversations get pretty dark. Well, yeah, that's like your uh-huh. unfiltered subconscious. It's a complete different part of you as a human being that doesn't generally come out. That's the primitive it's the, side. It versus the ego. That's the primitive. That's nothing. No, it's it's. That's nothing you. holding it back. No, yeah, it's it's the truest form of you because in every social interaction, no matter how well or genuine you know the person, there's a form of personal constraint. Where you're not your truest self, and when you're asleep in a dream state like that, your subconscious, when you wake up, is just free. Like, you gotta think, generally in a dream state, everything you're not, you are. Yeah. So you're gonna go into those territories and not even think about it. Yep. Well. I have a half. You won, Frank. Good job. It was a close game. Three and a half. I got a 70%. I did it. I did. That's still passing. I did better than I did in school. That's what a C. <laughs> it's a C minus, but go fuck yourself. I was going to say, that's at least a C. It's a C minus, okay? A, a, a B is 80. Right. No, that's a B minus, okay? Where the 70, fuck did you go to school? 70, 71, and 72 is a C minus. 73, 74, and 75, and 76 is all a C. And then 77 and 78 and 79 is a C plus, you know? All right. What do you consider an F? Uh, 64 and below. Uh, that's where that's mine what it differs. used to be. Mine's always been 65. And well, some yeah, of my college was. courses. No, some 65 of my... is a D minus. And fuck yeah, I got to the next level. Um, that <laughs> was for most of my schooling. For college, anything 70 or lower was an F. So, so no lie, in my cannabis courses, anything 70 lower is an F, uh, yeah. was an F. But I am happy to report that there was three <coughs> sections. And just because it's more... Um, <coughs> just because the lead up to it is more... I like it better like this. I'm going to do it backwards. Right. So on the third section... I had to get a 70 to pass, 50 multiple choice, and I think 10 written questions, right? And I think it was like that with every section, so 60 questions. You know what I'm saying? I got an 84 on that section. So, Woo! 
thank you. Thank you. And then, and then on section number two, um, so was- section number three uh, was mostly to do with compliance, you know, like the government regulations, everything you got to do to do this and that and the other. Section number two was about retail interactions, interactions with people, building relationships, identifying product and all that. I ended up with a 92 in that section. And section number one was all general product knowledge, right? I ended up with a hundred in that section. <laughs> My what weed. was your, oh, I guess, a GPA, I guess? Con- considering I it is a college course, what was your overall... I don't know how they do GPAs. You'd average did they everything give you together. A, did they give you a score, like an end score overall? No. Oh, of course not. But I mean, no, it would, it would be just 92. pass or fail. No, it it would be ninety two. Because think about it, I got three scores, right? One hundred ninety two and eighty four. You do the math. One hundred to ninety two. Math. You know, so I can't yeah, math. Yeah, you do. Either. Count to four and repeat. One hundred. Count to four and repeat. It, it it's works. Still, in my world, that's one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Right, you're counting to 92 to 100. Yeah, you go like I, this. What comes after four? So I can only Seven. count to f- group. I can only count groups of four up to four. Listen, my grade is a 92. Because 100 to 92 is eight. And then 92 to 84 is also eight. So when you add them all up and you average them out, I got a 92 average. Damn. Good job, Frank. Thank you. I, I don't know what mine broke down to, but I had like a 3.7. What's, what, what's a 4.0? A perfect score? Yeah. So then I got lo- just lower than that. Yeah, probably roughly what, around what I got. There were only a... Well, actually, the, a, few, a good chunk of the few things that I failed, I'm using air quotations, failed, was because while I was going through the school... I lived out in Caton, and we had really shitty internet, so a lot of those initial f- failing grades were just because the internet was acting wonky around the deadline time, and it failed to upload that night. Yeah. Like, I shit you not, I'm sure you've seen it, like, some days with shitty internet signal, it'll work great, and the next day it won't work at all. Yeah. Yep, it was one of those, and I just got a hold of my instructor be like, look, it's done, I just... So couldn't get anywhere to submit it. Where are we at for our uh, topics for this week? Is that about it? Um, I mean, I have a whole bunch more, but uh, <coughs> no need getting into them now. I guess. You want to get a third one in this week see, since we got uh, the content for it? Or are you trying mean, to build a bit of a stash first? Yeah. Yeah, let's keep it. I mean, keep well, it, these were two good episodes. Not to mention, so, it is 445, yeah, yeah. and I'm supposed to be helping out at the yeah, shop. Yeah, that, that too. And well, I didn't mean, like, record it today. Yeah, Ken, I just meant Ken's still in town. Week. I need to go spend some time with him also. Yeah, so. that's true. Yeah. You want to get him in on the podcast tomorrow or something? Um, or the next day? He won't say anything. I mean, he'll just he won't even sit here and be like, Hey, what's up, guys? It's nope. great talking with no. my dad. Nope. <clears throat> Does he listen to the podcast? Look, I try to make a Because I'm going to make fun of him. It looks like a balls. That's the dick. Look, here you, you go. You would see that, you homo. Look, that's all I did. There you go. Set of balls. It's a tree. I'll get it that way. Actually, that does look like a tree. Pretty cool tree. Here. You know what? Just because it's... Uh... <laughs> now it looks like balls. <laughs> Actually, I think it looks like uh, two candy canes. Two candy canes and some balls. You don't see it? It was just Christmas. It's like a fucking palm tree. You know what it looks like to me? Ready, young? Pile of weed. <laughs> looks like a pile of weed. A mixed up pile of weed. But are we done? Because I yes, am sadly out, out of we Dutch's. See you guys next week. Thanks for peace listening. out, bitches. No, we love you. Yeah. I'm kidding. We are not. You're not a bunch love of bitches. Love you a long time. Good. Love you a long time. Fight Allah. Make you holla.